I uh, have an interesting one here today. This is Dent Spy. Uh, could be pronouncing that wrong. Uh, by Tulsa Dental Specialties. Uh, E3 torque control motor. So I guess this is the uh, motor controller for uh, whatever dental tool this is uh, used for, I guess. I'm not a dentist, so I, I don't know. Uh, it did come in the shop today for a uh, battery issue, I guess. It has an internal battery the customer requested. Uh, we replaced the battery because they said uh, it's not holding a charge anymore. We plugged this in before we disassembled it, obviously. We plugged it in, noticed it was charging, uh, so we, um, we, we took it apart and we checked the battery itself. The battery seems fine. It's a six volt, uh, six volt battery. Actually, 2,000 milliamp hour. Uh, from the research uh, I performed, it looks like it's the correct battery for the unit. So we we actually plugged it back in. It automatically powers on as soon as you plug it in. We unplugged it and the unit stayed on. So obviously the battery was working properly. So we unplugged it, unplugged the battery to, to kill the unit again. Um, we'll plug the battery back in and the unit does not power on itself. We tried pressing the uh, the power button, nothing, nothing. So uh, we did a little troubleshooting. We're getting all of our voltages, the correct voltages um, on the board itself. So the next thing, uh, we we decided to troubleshoot the, the keypad section here. So before actually we took this um, decal off, we were sort of trying to figure out what what these contacts, what switches controlled, um, which pins on the board. So basically, these these uh, cables here physically connect to either the switches or the LEDs, the indicators on there. Uh, it, it was it was getting tricky to figure out. Uh, we we mapped out a few buttons. And we figured, you know what, let's just pop the decal off. We could always glue it back on after. And sort of what I what I figured was the case is the power button itself is right here. If we follow back the trace of the power button, and right there is our issue. Looks like it's burnt or corrosion or something uh, right on that trace, that power trace for the power button. So what the customer thought was a battery issue was in fact a power button issue and he, he assumed it was a battery issue because when you plug in this unit to the wall, the wall adapter, it automatically powers on. Now it doesn't do that when you just have the battery connected. So that, that uh, auto turn on functionality only happens when you plug in the unit. Uh, so you know it makes sense, he thought, he thought it was the battery, but in fact it's the power switch. So we're going to repair this trace here for the customer. We're going to clean this up a little bit. We're going to glue this decal back on just like brand new, just like the way it came. And we're going to give it a good test. So because of the damage on this membrane here, uh, let me get something I can point with. Okay. Because of the damage on this membrane here, so the power switch, we just kind of visually traced out uh, where the power switch is connecting to, this is the power switch. The two lines up here come down. Let's see, they go around the LED, come over here, and they connect to these first two contacts here. First two pins. So, so because of the damage, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this little switch assembly itself, and we're going to replace that with an actual micro tech tack switch, micro tactile switch. Uh, it might be a, a slightly different height uh, than these, but really it shouldn't matter at all. I'm sure the customer just wants this thing uh, back in his inventory. I guess this was a spare for his dental practice. So we're going to pop a, a new, actually, micro tack switch on there. We're going to actually take some, some uh, very thin gauge wire, run it down here in this little crevice, this little area some room in here. We're going to run it down here, run it along, come in through here, and then we're going to go down here and connect it directly to these two pins right here. And 
if all works out well, as we hope, this original decal will cover up those thin wires and we'll be ready to go. I just wanted to show real quick that the power button in, is indeed not working so I just just reconnected the cables, reconnected the battery and we're going to give this power button a test. So pushing, nothing's happening here. Pushing, holding, nothing's happening. Uh, I mean we, we know that and we confirm that because we actually checked continuity and there's absolutely no connection from the switch once it's depressed to the first two uh, contacts there which, which are actually the power button so just confirming that just an initial test definitely not working uh, but we can as I mentioned if we plug in the power adapter 12 volt adapter to it it starts up by itself because um, it's detecting that the uh, and it sort of goes to sleep wake it back up uh, it's detecting that the charger being plugged in so we disconnect it and it's still on so so there you go the battery is in fact functioning properly uh, but of course the power switch you can't turn off can't turn on we have several style of microtech switches here and we're just lining them up um, this is still kind of sticky so the benefit is we just stuck some of these switches up. I'm trying to get the the most comparable feel, the tactile feel of these switches. It's obviously not going to be the same, but something similar, something easy to push. Um, so these are the two ones that just stuck here temporarily just to feel. Now this switch is it's very difficult to depress because it's actually meant for probably like another plastic piece or something to go on top of this to push it. So just using a finger and obviously this decal is going to be on it. Uh, this isn't going to work, so we can't use this one. I have this one here. Now this feels much better. It's not exactly like the stock, like, like the OEM, but it's definitely better than this one here. And the benefit of this, as opposed to even this one and, and others in this kit here um, is the height uh, obviously it's it's gonna be higher than the stock switch but really not that much higher so it's gonna it's gonna bulge out a tad bit but I think honestly when the decals on it we're probably not gonna notice so I think when the decals on that it's gonna work just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna disassemble this contact assembly here. Just get rid of this part. We're gonna place this switch over here. Probably put a couple dabs of, of glue to hold it in place. And obviously the decal is gonna hold it in place as well. Then we're gonna run those wires like we mentioned and we'll pick it up from there. Just wanted to show her out before I route these wires. So we have the switch uh, glued in place. Uh, we have two wires connecting to the switch. Now, let me see. We're gonna actually cut out with the X-Acto knife. They can't tell, but there's two channels cut into each side of this because there's a spacer. Uh, that's the way these membrane switches work. They're, they have spacers and, and different uh, lower membrane, upper membrane. And it's almost like a, like a stack. They're stacked up. Uh, anyway, so I cut through the middle part of the stack, which was a spacer, uh, to make uh, a groove for the wires to fit. I'm going to fit the wires through those grooves. I'm going to route them through here, like I mentioned, and then through here. Hopefully we can hide these bright red wires. Alright, this is where we're at now. We're going to temporarily connect these up and give it a test to make sure it powers on uh, the way it's supposed to. Okay, here we are. We temporarily connected everything up. I'm going to clean these wires up and run them along those ribbon cables nice with probably some captain tape. Uh, we have the battery connected. This is the first time I'm testing. Right now, let's see. Hopefully all goes well. Look at that. Power button works. We're just on battery right now. No adapter connected. Awesome. 
Power off. Power on. All right. So there we go. Battery's fine. Was not battery issue. It was a switch issue. And normally, uh, the, you know, you can't get replacement uh, switch. You can't get really any parts for these units here. So it's really the only option is what we did. Actually put a tactile switch there and all right, back up and running. Awesome. I'm going to um, clean up the wiring a little bit. And we'll get right back to you when this thing is done with the the overlay back on it, the vinyl. And we'll take one last look at this. Okay, here we go. We're all put back together. Um, battery is everything's connected. The battery's connected. Uh, we didn't put the the case screws in just just in case we got to pull it apart for for uh, whatever reason in case this test doesn't go well. Um, all right. Well, there it is, fixed. Hope the customer's happy. The feel isn't perfect. I mean, you get an audible click with these, obviously the stock. It's less of a click than I was hoping. It's definitely working. If you use your nail, sort of in the center, you do feel, you can't hear it, but you do feel the click. Um, I did feel the click much more before I put this uh, vinyl on, but because the vinyl's tight, it's uh, it's kind of cutting down that click feel. But in any case, it is working. I hope the customer's happy. Really, this is the only way it can be repaired um, without having OEM parts, which are not available. Uh, if anybody has any other dental supply equipment that needs to be repaired, electronics that is, uh, please keep us in mind. As always, we repair all electronics. Free estimates. Go to www.rudolphrepairs.com. And we're happy to give you an estimate. Uh, mail-in repairs. Click on the mail-in section of our website. Phone number is 1-800-517-9101. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.